So I think it's evident that Dr. Oz is having a difficult time formulating a cohesive message in the race against his Democratic opponent, John Fetterman, and that's because it's painfully obvious that he has no message. He comes off as an out-of-touch elite, bored celebrity who got busted peddling snake oil to the people who supported him before, and now he just is trying to do something to convince people that he cares, but it just seems like a vanity project and an opportunity for him to promote his brand. So he doesn't really have anything to offer to voters and he's struggling. And that is uh, really funny to watch. Now, Twitter is not real life. I vehemently maintain that, but I can't help but think that him getting ratioed on Twitter constantly is evidence that the people just aren't picking up what he's putting down. They're not buying what he's selling, and rightfully so. And it almost seems like he tees up these attacks for John Fetterman. So, for example, he tweeted out, who do you trust to fix Pennsylvania? Hashtag Team Oz. Now, I just have to stop because, again, this is an individual who was grilled by Congress because he was selling pseudoscientific dietary supplements that he claimed were like miracle fat-burning products. It was just a complete scam. So I don't think that you should invoke trust because you're giving John Fetterman a million different attacks that he can use against you. But nonetheless, he did that. And people like myself reminded him that he's not trustworthy. And 22,000 people decided to chime in, making this probably one of the most brutal ratios that I've seen in quite some time. But here's what some people said. Parker Malloy writes, you're confusing senator with governor genius. Greg Rad says, I trust your opponent, John Fetterman. And this entire thread is basically people just ruthlessly shitting on him. This person says that they trust Dr. Pepper more than him. <laughs> Kyla says, we trust Fetterman, the guy who has actually lived here his entire life and served as a mayor for 13 years and lieutenant governor. And I mean, the dunking goes on and on. And just today, he tweeted out what could be mistaken as an endorsement for John Fetterman without the proper context, writing, John Fetterman is one of the most progressive candidates in the country. Yeah, let me explain to you why other Republicans, as dumb as they may be, are at least savvy enough to avoid calling someone a progressive and using that word as a pejorative. It's because even if Americans don't necessarily identify with the label progressive, by and large, they support progressive policies. So if you use progressive, that has positive connotations, right? So what you do instead to avoid that is you just resort to red scaring. You call him a commie, right? A dirty commie. That's what they did to Bernie Sanders. And that is more effective if you're trying to scare independents into supporting you. But he's saying he's one of the most progressive candidates in the country. Now, in that clip that he shared in that particular tweet, they compare him to Bernie Sanders. And let me remind you that Bernie Sanders has consistently been one of the most popular senators in America. No, he's been the most popular senator in America consistently every time that poll is conducted. But yet, they're going to deliberately and explicitly tie John Fetterman to the most popular senator in America. Take a look. Against a Bernie Sanders clone, and he even says it. Uh, tell us how this race will break down. We have a little over a minute. Well, real fast, this gentleman has endorsed Bernie Sanders, said they're the two most progressive candidates in the country, and it's a stark contrast from what I believe in. You know, he believes in spending trillions of more dollars on far-left agenda items. I believe in no more reckless spending. He believes that we should stifle in energy and innovation in America. I believe it's an all-of-the-above strategy. He believes uh, that we should release one-third of the prison population in Pennsylvania while we're in the middle of a crime wave in Philadelphia, and I believe that we should keep our streets safe. He believes in open borders and sanctuary cities, I believe, uh, in a secure border. There's a big difference between two of us. But he's bankrolled a lot of money because my competition, they've all endorsed me, by the way, God bless him, gracefully done that. But he had no competition. So he's bankrolled a lot of money. So if you're worried about him, and you should be, go to DrOz.com and chip in. We can take him down if we get the word out. Yeah. Now, to be clear, when he says, if you're worried about him, you should be, the translation is, I'm worried about him, and he should be. He is openly calling for austerity, which will deliberately hurt the American people. Dr. Oz isn't saying let's tax the large multinational corporations. He's just saying, oh, well, John Fetterman supports reckless far left spending, except John Fetterman can easily dismantle that talking point by explaining what he supports, right? Universal pre-K, things that help Americans and fatten their wallets. So you can be vague. But if John Fetterman makes the case, that's going to land because people are struggling. And all you're saying is we shouldn't spend to help you. 
that's not going to help people. That's not going to land with people. Now, the reason why Dr. Oz is scared is because early polling indicates that John Fetterman will decisively beat him in November. As Max Greenwood of The Hill reports, Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman holds a nine-point lead over his Republican rival, celebrity physician Mehmet Oz, in the Pennsylvania Senate race, according to a new USA Today Network Suffolk University poll. The poll shows Fetterman with 46% support among likely voters in Pennsylvania, while Oz, whom former President Trump endorsed in April comes in at 37%. Another 13% remain undecided in the race, with independents making up a plurality of those voters. The survey shows Fetterman with an early edge in one of the closest watched Senate races of the 2022 midterm election cycle and suggests that, at least for now, Democrats have a path to flipping the seat currently held by retiring Senator Pat Toomey. Yeah, so that right there is why Dr. Oz is scared, and he's making it very clear that he is afraid of his opponent, John Fetterman. But having said that, though, I would not say that this race, that John Fetterman's victory is a foregone conclusion, because, I mean, Dr. Oz is a particularly bad candidate, but Republicans nationally have a lot of momentum, and Dr. Oz, as bad as he is as a candidate, he could luckily gets swept up in that momentum. So here's more from that same poll. The poll does show that Republicans have begun to coalesce around Oz as their nominee in the day since his chief primary rival, former hedge fund CEO David McCormick, conceded the GOP nod to Trump-backed doctor. 76% of Republican voters say they support Oz in the general election. Republican voters also appear more motivated than Democrats, with 73% of respondents who identified as GOP voters saying they are either extremely or very interested in the Senate race compared to 68% of Democrats. So I think it's a little bit too early to make any definitive statements or predictions about who's going to win. Dr. Oz could still win, um, but right now that's not the case, right? Things can change. A lot can happen between now and November, but it's hard to not think that Dr. Oz would be polling higher if he wasn't such a terrible, terrible candidate. But we'll just have to wait and see. But I'm going to enjoy watching him face plant again and again until November because holy shit, this is one of the worst candidates I think I've seen in a very long time. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today.